Pre-K, let's continue on reading Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. When we stopped, we stopped in the middle of chapter seven yesterday because it was a long one, and Alice was at this crazy tea party. And the Mad Hatter and the March Hare were there. And if you remember, they were just saying stuff that didn't make any sense at all, and it was really rather funny. And then there was also the Dormouse, that little Dormouse that was asleep most of the time. And when they wanted to talk to him, they'd pinch him to wake him up. So when we stopped, the Dormouse had begun to tell them a story. But, have some, he was interrupted by the March Hare who said, have some more tea to Alice. I haven't had any yet, Alice replied, so I can't have any more. You mean you can't have any less, said the Hatter. It's very easy to take more than nothing. Alice did not know quite what to say, so she poured some tea and took some bread and butter and then turned to the Dormouse and asked again, why did they live at the bottom of a well? I want a clean cup, interrupted the Hatter. Everyone move over one place. He moved on as he spoke and the Dormouse followed him and the March Hare moved into the Dormouse's place and Alice unwillingly took the place of the March Hare. The Hatter was the only one who got a clean cup from that move. Alice was worse off than before. And as the March Hare had just, as the March Hare had just spilled milk into his plate, the Dormouse had closed his eyes by this time and was going off to sleep again. The Hatter pinched it and woke it up with a little shriek and went on. Finish your story. They were in the well learning to draw. They drew things that began with M, such as mouse traps and the moon and memories and muchness. You know, you say things are much of muchness, but did you ever see a drawing of muchness? I'm very confused, said Alice. I don't think. Then you shouldn't talk, said the Hatter. Alice had certainly had enough. She got up and walked off. The Dormouse fell asleep instantly and neither of the others cared or noticed that Alice had gone. She looked back twice hoping they would call her back. The last time she looked, she saw them trying to put the Dormouse in the teapot. And here's a funny picture of the Mad Hatter and the March Hare and the bottom half of the Dormouse sticking out of the teapot. Very strange tea party, wouldn't you say? Well, I'll never go there again, said Alice, as she made her way through the woods. And then she noticed that one of the trees had a door leading right into it. There we go. That's very curious, she thought. I may as well go in it. And in she went. Alice is very brave, isn't she? Once more, she found herself back in that long hallway from the beginning and close to the little glass table. This time I'll get this right, she said, and took the little golden key off the table and unlocked the door that led to the garden. Then she nibbled on the right hand bit of mushroom again until she was about a foot high. She finally walked through the little door and at last found herself in the beautiful garden. And that's the end of chapter seven. Now, Tomorrow we get chapter eight and it's called The Queen's Croquet Ground. And I think I told you, but if you weren't here yesterday about croquet, it's a game you play with a wooden ball and you have a little woolen, wooden, um, it's called a mallet, but it's kind of looks like a big hammer almost. And you hit your croquet ball with your mallet and try and get it through little special things they're funny they're called wickets but they're really just a little piece of metal that goes around and you try and hit your ball through it 
and that's how you win. So there's going to be a croquet game at the Queen's in chapter eight. So we will see what happens then. Have a very great day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.